Good evening, and welcome to Kalijaru's Foundation. And I'm happy, I'm excited to have you here this evening. I know you all are young people aspiring to do business, and and you know you have your goals and your objectives that you want to achieve, and you've decided to come here to gather. And we're going to make sure that you have your your time here is optimized as much as possible. So, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Kalija Roots Foundation, I'm honored to welcome you to our Youth Empowerment and Development Program. Our foundation is deeply committed to the growth and success of the next generation. And it is with great enthusiasm that we gather here today to embark on this journey of empowerment and inspiration. As we come together, we recognize the immense potential and talent that resides within such within each and every young person here in this room. And our program is dedicated to providing the knowledge, resources, and support necessary to foster this potential and pave the way for a brighter future. Through mentorship, skill development, and educational opportunities, we aim to equip the youth of Africa with the tools they need to thrive and lead in an ever-changing world. We believe that investing in our youth and young people is not only a moral imperative, but also a strategic decision for the prosperity of our communities and the world at large. By empowering our youth, we are sowing the seeds for innovation, progress, and positive change. I urge all of you to actively engage in this program, seize opportunities it presents and embrace the journey of self-discovery and growth. Together, let's build a future where every young person has the chance to realize their full potential and contribute meaningfully to society. On that note, I want to thank you for your presence and your anticipated participation as I invite you for, to also embark on this journey of transformation together. So on that note, I say Karibu, welcome. Thank you. My name is Paul Hart, and I'm the founder of Kalija Root Foundation. And I'm happy to meet each and every one of you here today. And I'm not here by myself. I'm here with some of my friends and my colleagues that have come to also add value to this program. All the way, they've come from far and wide. So you know, um, this, this class is a combination of young people some of them are in school, some of them have just left school, some of them own small businesses that they are managing, and they want to grow it into the next level. They want to use it to add value to their communities and also be able to employ more laborers. So these are problem solvers we have in this room. So we're going to do our best as we collaborate together, as we discuss, we'll cook up new ideas on how you can achieve your goals and your objectives. So I invite you to keep an open mind as we interact today. So with no much time wasting, let's jump into the matter of the day. The first speaker that we'll have speaking to us on sales strategy, because in this room are people who, who do business, and sales is very vital. And it's important that you, you have the right strategies so you can, it can assist you in your goal achievements and your objectives. So this morning, or this evening, I will welcome to the stage our speaker, first speaker all the way from London, England. So let's put our hands together for Professor Tim Dingo. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I'm going to show you what you really need to know and tell you why you know. How many of you own a phone? If you've got a phone, it's the only time you'll ever be asked at one of these things. Get your phone out. Get your phone on. Be brave. Get your phone out. Nothing bad's going to happen. Take your phone out. And I haven't, no, I haven't interfered with anybody's phone, have I? I haven't met any of you before. This is a magic trick. You ready? So into it, in Google, put in positive self-promotion. Because I mentor some of the best chefs in the world. I mentor lots of business people. And they want a positive self-promotion. So do it. Go on. Do it, do it, do it. Google it. Positive self-promotion. Now, if you want to be good at sales, you want to be number one on Google when somebody looks it up as a business. It's really, really hard, but I'm going to show you a cheat code. If you like cheat codes, this is it. 
Anybody done it? Anybody there? Put your hand up if you've got in. Google, it's the old fashioned Google. We love Google. We don't. But positive stuff, anybody in? Come on, excitement. What do you got? What's number one? Ten secrets. Ten secrets of what? Positive self promotion by? By me. That's incredible. Thank you very much. Well done. So, all positively self promoted. So, what's that about? It is virtually impossible for any new business to be number one on Google, except it's not. If you want to be good at sales and marketing, you're going to have to use two things. One is the human brain, and the other is AI. And I've used it for a while, for about three, four years, to find out how to make sales better and more positive. In fact, I'm so good at doing this. If you're really into AI, you can go to ChatGPT and look up under Explore GPT. It's very new, only been open two weeks. There is a Chat Open AI store now open, and I've written my own so, Strat AI Matic, which will help you decide how to go and sell your things in your business, how to market it. I've uploaded everything I know. My human brain is in there. That is amazing. So. What questions, what questions, what answers can I give you about sales and marketing? Now, I'm really, really old. If you looked at that list of all the things I've done, it's impossible to be able to do them young. But I've had about five careers, and I'm just starting this new, brilliant career to inspire people to be amazing every day. Seven words. Inspire people to be amazing every day. That's what my job is. What a great job. I love it. So here is slide number one. Be quick fire, and I'll go through them. You can make notes, you can film me, I don't mind. It's all public domain, it's for you, it's a gift. It's your gift, and it's up to you what you do with it. So here we go. Number one, ask better questions. The first rule of being good at sales and marketing, to be able to pitch your company to sell anything, you've got to understand your market, and you're gonna ask better questions. We call that, and you want to recall it, write the letters down, A, B, Q. If you've got A, B, Q and AI, you're going to be on fire. So, seek to understand, then to be understood. It's an old-fashioned quote. What does it mean? If you don't know your customers, there's no point in your business existing. Ask better questions to find out what they want. In fact, I love this one straight away. Go to the bottom. Don't give people a solution unless they've got a problem. The only way of finding if they've got a problem in their in lives business, is to ask you know them. Use you really know, nice open-ended questions. In other words, what you don't want to be doing is, you know, have you been having trouble lately you using your phone? That's a closed question. That's a yes or a no. So tell me, do you have problems when you want to look up information on the internet by using Google? Would there be a better way? You ask them open questions and they start talking. Here, learn to be a great active listener. If you can't listen, 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 unfortunately, you won't be a success in business. Because the next one, questions that create a vision of success. In your mind, you have an idea what success might look like. I love the person who got up and said, I want to influence not only this country, but this continent, but the world. Wonderful. And I genuinely believe you can. But if you don't start by asking better questions, if you don't start by looking at a vision for what that looked like, you won't get anywhere. Next point. If you don't tell them, they don't know. I used to tell and train people in hospitality this one thing. When you take a, if you're a waiter and you go up to the table, if you don't tell them, they don't know. The same goes in sales and marketing. In your business, you know what it does. Be clear, clarity is king. Be absolutely certain that you know what your business does. You're the only person that does. But if you don't tell me what it does, I haven't a clue. Now when you all spoke, you, you all spoke from the heart. I love that. But tell me what your business does. What excites people? Never ask the question of anybody, what do you do for a living? Ask the question, what excites you right here, right now? Get your channels right, whether it's social media and you do a TikTok channel or you do an ex-formerly Twitter channel or you do anything else. It should be consistent. 
Those of you who looked up that thing on Google, positive self-promotion, have already got the insight to getting a link to me on LinkedIn. And I can, if I can help and market your stuff, I will. Regular communications build brand recall. We all know if we see a swoosh took, it's Nike. We all know if we see certain brands, what they represent. Be consistent and be clear. And start getting feedback from everybody you work with. That's clients, suppliers, the public. Don't just go to your friends and family. They're the worst. Your family are your worst enemy sometimes in business. Go to a stranger. Go to anybody you really respect and ask them. Find what the issue is. That's number two. Only three to go. See if you've made the notes on these. See if they're going to ring true. Number three. People buy why you do it, not what you do. There's a great book by Simon Sinek. If you can get it, you can watch it on video. It's free on Google. You can look at it or you can read his books. It all starts with why. And it starts with this. When you connect emotionally with a potential client, you're far more likely to get business. People understand passion. They look into your heart and see whether you're true or not. You should know in these 20 minutes that Professor Tim up here believes every word I say because I'm speaking from my heart. You've got to do the same. Ultimately, the person who buys your thing, whatever it is, service or product, isn't buying what you do or indeed how you do it. They're buying why you do it. So get your purpose sorted out. Authenticity, authenticity sorry, attracts. People love reality. The why is your differentiator. It's your USP, if you like. But be consistent. Don't change it. And the last one on that slide says this. Stories sell. Stories sell. Have a story. You've all got one. But if you don't tell me, I don't know. So make sure you've done the work and you can do that. Next. Relationships lead to sales, not the other way around. Right? You don't get a sale and then you form a relationship. You want people to buy your why. Trust is the bedrock. I like to call it K-L-T. People buy when they know, like, and trust. K-L-T. No like, and trust. Make sure everything you do is personalized. What do I mean by that? I know a, a, a colleague or somebody I mentor who is selling clothes. And he gets secondhand clothes, he washes them, cleans them, irons them. He has a great YouTube channel, he has a great TikTok channel, and he sells these things up at inflated prices, boxes them up, but he handwrites a note in every box before he sends it out. That's called personalization. Know your client. When you ask a question, say Professor Tim, or Tim, if you like. Tim, what do you think about that? Get to know your clients and make it real. There's no doubt engagement, where you engage with your customers, where you are the person that is actually doing it, works every single time. Feedback fosters growth. If you're not asking, and all the time asking, for your customers to tell you how we're doing, how we're doing, you see it on little posters sometimes on cars, how are we doing? Tell us how we're doing. Give us a QR code or give us this text. How is my driving? Also, I never put that on my car. I never want somebody to say he was speeding or he, was, he took that corner too fast. Don't want that. But I do want it in my services. So how do I get feedback? So I did, what, four and a half hours this morning? At the end of the course, everyone in the course will write a feedback form. And the guys that run the course have an absolute mission. The next course will be better than the last course. And part of my role is to deliver that. Long-term value over short-term gain. Do not, absolutely do not, go for short-term money, get the money in, charge a massive premium. Work your crowd, work your sales clients carefully. Nurture them. 
be clear in that. Last slide of information, you've got an MBA. I'm going to test you. Informed decisions drive successful sales. What do I mean? Data drives everything. It drives understanding. Where do I get data from? It's free, it's out there. I told you at the start, there is a clue. There is a clue, a clue in these words. AI plus ABQ, your brain, determines everything. AI is now so good, ChatGPT, or if you want to use my own one, it's free, Strat AI-matic, you can find every bit of data out there on sales. You can look at successful campaigns that went viral. Analyze, take in data. There's a great multi-billionaire retired from Amazon now, but Jeff Bezos used to say this, make a decision based on 70% of the information. What did he mean by that? If you wait till you know everything about everything, it's too late. Some people call it analysis paralysis, where you're just waiting all the time, doing a launch, go for it. Don't hold back. It requires courage. It requires guts. Customer feedback is all about your guidance. If you use it properly, and the new digital tools that you can use to get customers to give you a testimonial, get a reference from them, get something, that's your authenticity. That's your badge of honor. That's what it says. You do what you say on the tin. You are good. Knowledge empowers sales teams. Once you develop and you start to grow, hopefully you'll get people who believe in your why, in your purpose. Knowledge is all about giving them the power because they're going to be the key people. Last one on there for you. Analytical tools and AI will maximize efficiency. I shouldn't have to tell you this because you're young. I took up AI about four or five years ago. In fact, all of you have been using it for years. If you use Google, that's what's called ANI, Artificial Narrow Intelligence. It's dumb, but it's a ranking order. That's all it is. It ranks everybody in the world's information. Spotify for music. YouTube makes suggestions. Netflix will make suggestions what to watch next. These are all have been around for ages. That's AI, Artificial Intelligence, but ANI. We moved in November 2022 to AGI, the generative machine learning. It's amazing. All these slides, every single thing on these slides was done by AI last night. I asked it a question through my own open AI system, and it writes the slides. It's so brilliant, it writes the slides, and I say, make it into VBA code. Then he knows what I'm talking about. You copy that, put it in where it says macro and PowerPoint, and it'll make your slides. The world has changed and it's changing so rapidly. If you want to be part of this, get learning. Because the one thing I can say with this is the world has come to those who are still learning. Ask better questions, you'll get somewhere. In recap, that's nearly 20 minutes. That's 17 minutes, 22 seconds in my head. Remember these things. A, B, Q. Ask better questions. If you get better questions, you'll get Ask better questions, you'll get better answers. That's right, that's right. I guess I'm on a roll here. If you get better answers, what will you do? You'll make, you're whispering it so quiet. Let's do it again. Let's do the whole segment again. They can cut that and edit it. They'll be fine. ABQ means ask better questions. If you ask better questions, what do you get? Oh, a lot better. But I want to even louder the third. Right, that's right. You get better answers. If you get better answers, what do you do? You make... Oh, fantastic, Lily, that's killing me, this video, I love it. Okay, number two, if you don't tell them, that's right, if you've got no marketing, you've got no sales strategy, use AI. Who's your friend? Your brain and AI. Ask better questions of AI, it will write your sales strategy. You don't need somebody else to tell you how to do it if you use it properly. Thirdly, people burn... Uh, sorry, I'll say that in English. People buy why you do it, not... They don't care what you do. They want to know why. What is your passion? Fourthly, relationships lead to sales. 
not the other way around. I believe strongly you form relationships before you do anything. And lastly, informed decisions drive successful sales. Okay, I've been one minute away from telling you the golden rule of all of this. And it's true for me, it's true for you, it's true for everyone. In life, you've got very few opportunities to have a go at doing something. You are here for one reason. You all said it. You're passionate about being an entrepreneur, a business person, to learn more. Your brain shuts down if you don't ask better questions. So from this day onwards, you're inspired to be amazing by this one simple rule. Ask better questions. A, B, Q. You'll turn your world around and it'll make you amazing every day and have effective sales strategies. Thank you very much. Any questions? Anybody got any questions? Yes, question, yes. Sorry, carry on. Question. Of course, yes, introduce yourself again if you want. Okay. My name is again Edward Tushimi. So my, my question, how do you build your trust in your business? Huh? Very, very good question. Those who didn't hear it, how do you put the trust in your business? Somehow there's a connection between your gut, your intuition. It's a very great quote, I love this. It, uh, conditions don't affect your destiny, decisions do. There's never a right time to launch a business. It's always like I could give you a thousand reasons never to launch a business. The economy, cost of living, the money, security, you name it. Remember Jeff Bezos, 7% of information, and trust your heart, trust your gut. Do all the work, be really hard working, then go for it. And give it everything, give it everything from here, everything from there, and that's all you can do. My question is, in the world where there are a lot of people who do the same thing as, as what you do, mm. what mm. can you do to be unique from those people? That's a very, very good question. How do you become unique? What is your thing? It goes back to the simple question, which is this. Solve the problem for somebody. You'll find the problem your customers have got. If you're solving that, it's unique to you already. Because you're now going to deliver them the best service in the fastest time for the best price. Don't drop your price, by the way. Keep the price a good price. How do you stand out and be unique? Know your why. The only person who knows that is you. Communicate your why, your passion, and that's all you can do. Okay, thanks very much, guys. So, Professor Tim, we want to thank you on behalf of the class for that quick 20 minute MBA. So, um, with no wasting of time, let's call on our next speaker who will speak on customer concerns and professionally. So, we're calling our Dr. Theophilus, all the way from Accra, Ghana. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, including my colleagues who are here. Uh, it's very, very uh, interesting to meet youth in Africa who are inspiring to be out of the difficult situations many of us find ourselves. You know the population of the youth in Africa? It's huge. By 2030, 42% of the global population will be the youth from Africa. So if you want to start something now, it means what will happen to you by 2030? Yes, what will happen to you? 2024, you want to start something. By 2030, where will you be? The entrepreneurs, where will you be? Come again. If, if you are lucky enough to, to be in person in that world, you, you have some brands. OK. You grow. You grow your, yeah. Eventually, you grow your enterprise. How many of us have enterprises here or businesses that we are managing? Raise up your hand. Or you want to have? If you want to have. If you want to have. <laughs> okay. OK, thank you. It means this topic is very, very useful and will also meet your aspirations. Now, the next question. If you have the chance to leave Rwanda, where would you go? 
which country that you want to visit and stay there permanently if you have the chance to leave Rwanda? Yes, you. No. Well done. Yes. Canada. Okay. Yes. USA. USA. Yes. Yes. Where? Qatar. Why? Why do you want to go to Canada or USA or Qatar? Why? Why do you want to go there? Why? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's good like, that in life you have to learn from those who are more experienced than you. So I believe that I cannot go to the US and stay there forever, but I can just go there and learn from those who are doing like what Some I want to bring in. Okay, out. thank you. Yes, any other answer? Yes. A very good one. Yes. Oh, no. You want to just go there? For no reason? Yes. Okay, thank you. When I get the opportunity to live in another country, first of all, I will start from a country which is still underdeveloped. Thank you. Now, why do we all want to go to these countries? Because they have well structured businesses. And those businesses are making contribution towards the economies of those countries. Is that not so? Yeah, so we want to find out those businesses, what do they have that we want to learn from them? Okay, then when we get what they have, then we will relate it to our topic of trying to handle customer inquiries and their concerns professionally. Okay, so businesses are very important in every society, including Rwanda. Then for every business, <coughs> we have particular features. I want to get two. If you go to any company or any business, what would you see across board? Yes. What will look? Yes. Sales. What? Yeah, sales. Sell. No, I don't get you. Sales. 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 Okay. Sales. Okay. Sales. Then what next? Well done. Yes. Investing in shipping. Investing in shipping. Well done. Any other? Okay. If you go to any company, you have people. Every company have a purpose. Every company relate with society. Then the last one, every company has management. So relationship is what we are going to stress on. How do you relate well with the stakeholders of the organization, which Professor Tim emphasized more on it. So every company relates with society. And for that matter, the best way to do is to handle their concerns, their inquiries professionally. If you don't do that, what will happen to your company? They will exit. And when they exit, what happens? This one will not what? Will not be realized. So relating well with all stakeholders and addressing their concern is the surest way of what? Increasing your sales in the organization. Now, who is a customer? A customer is somebody who has a need, a want, put together an expectation that you want to what? Fulfill. And when you fulfill it, you have to pay in the form of money or kind or what goodwill so providing a service to customer is not basically free you have to pay something so that this aspect of the business can be what achieved we have two types of customers who can mention them yes uh, potential and the real one potential and the real one Okay, that's good. 
who can also give us another one? Yes. Wandering customers. Wandering customers. Okay, that's good. Then next one. Yeah, all what we are saying, they come under the external customers. But we also have what? Internal customers. So those of you that you have a business, an enterprise, or you work with your colleagues in an organization, your colleague is what? Internal customer. Is that clear? So whatever service you provide to the internal, external customer must equally be what? Offered to what? Internal customers. So we have internal customers, we have external customers. And when you come to the external customers, then we have the wandering, we have the potential, we have the latent, those that even are not yet born, but they can be your customer when they grow up. Now, why do we need customers? Without customers, the company or business cannot survive. So you must build up your customer life, build up their experience, build up their expectation, so that you have what you call long life relationship. And when the relationship is solid, then they will buy from you always, they will become delighted, and they can also tell others about your product. Bad news about your product or services, what? Sells better than what? Good news. Are you aware of that? If I tell you or I sell you a good product, you may tell many, as many as seven people. But if I tell or I sell you a bad product, how many people do you tell? Everyone. Everyone. And what is the population of Rwanda? <laughs> yes, around 14. Yes. So it means if I give you bad product, 30 million people will hear. So when, if you don't give you good product in this room, everybody will hear. But when you give good product, few of Rwandans will hear from us. But we are interested in the what? The good product so that we can sell our company. So getting your customers on board is very important. And you must build a long life relationship with the customers so that even children of your key customers today can grow up and what? Enjoy the product. Now, when you provide your product or services, two things happen. Who can tell me if I give you this water? Two things that will come out from this. One is you are satisfied or you are not what? Satisfied. So when you are satisfied, it's good news. Still, we need feedback, we need inquiries, we need to address your concern. On that note, you may need more of this. So we have to what? Give you more. Or you want to tell somebody good about our business. So we need to respond to that. But if we give you the product and we are not happy, you become what? Dissatisfied. Then you what? You may complain. If you complain that we don't address the concerns, you will exit. And that might be the end of the relationship. We don't want that. So we are here to equip you with knowledge, skills, and attitude so that you can handle every form of inquiries, every form of concerns, not in any way, but professionally. The word professional is what? Key. Because anybody in this world can handle inquiries. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Everybody can handle concerns. But we are interested in the professionalism that is attached to handling customer complaints and concerns. When we talk about professionalism, a number of characteristics are clear. The first one is you must be competent.
to do that particular job of handling a concern. So you need design knowledge, you need skills, you must also possess positive what? Attitude towards handling inquiries. In Ghana, a lot of customer officials or sales have this attitude that if they want to address an issue, sometimes they think they are doing what? A favor. Is it happening in Rwanda? I am offering a product to you, and you've asked for inquiries, and I must provide, but it appears I'm doing a favor. And that attitude is not accepted in what? This environment. And for professionalism, we must have the right attitude towards handling concerns and inquiries. Now the next thing that is of importance is the rules of the game of handling concerns. We must also be familiar with the rules of the game. Then the third is what? Standards that you also have to deploy. So if an inquiry, a complaint is lodged, for example, how long will it take to address the concern? 10 minutes? One day, one year, or not at all. We must also be interested in the standards. Then the, another important aspect is the ethical and moral aspect of our handling the issue. And that, that one, we are interested in consciousness of you providing the solution. The second one is what? Integrity. The next one is honesty. The next one is what? Confidence that you have to respond to the inquiries. Respect. You have to respect the one who is asking for the response. Then another important one is what? The emotions that you carry along in resolving the issues. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you surprised? Are you willing to help? So that is the emotional aspect. Now, what steps would you deploy to deal with concerns or inquiries? If I come to your, your enterprise, you have a business, and I buy water, or any product. I use it, I'm not happy. How would you address my issue? Thank you. Yes. So try and others will also try. Yeah. Uh, according to what Mr. Tingle told us about okay. what I will do while you you okay, you don't you don't like my products. Yes. I'd firstly like to know the problem that is there the, so that you can Find a solution. So you want uh, to find out the problem so I can find a solution. Yeah. Yes, let's clap for her. Well done. <laughs> now, uh, my brother, what will you also do? Apart from the problem, what will you also do to resolve the issue? Thank you very much. Okay. First of all, that's the feedback for the business. For the yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, and I would like to answer that uh, single. I would ask a customer mm -hmm. what the problem is. The problem is? Yes. OK. And I can see if I have a substitute for the product. OK. Uh, you provide. Yeah, I provide a substitute. OK. Thank you. Let's clap for him. <laughs> yes, the third one. Yes, try that one. Thank you. OK. I will also ask the customer what's his suggestion about, about the change of the product. OK. Thank you. Let's clap for ourselves. It means you are, you, are, you, are, you are very familiar with the solutions to the problems. In any way, do not allow any customer to come to your end as it in a dissatisfied manner. I hope you get it. At any rate, ensure that the customer is very, very happy and satisfied. So how do you address any issue? 
The first one is identify the problem that the person carries along and its agency. And its agency. And you, as practitioner, the agency is put in a way where you categorize the issues as first one is an agent, or it has been resolved, or it is pending, or there is going to be a follow-up. So when an issue crops up and the person tells you and understand everything, put the problem in that category. After the classification, you have to respond quickly and professionally. That is where the standard of time is important. <clears throat> if you spend more days, hours, the customer may think that you are not putting agency <coughs> and importance to the issue. So we have to resolve it as quickly as possible. And how do you resolve it quickly and professionally? Acknowledge the message or the issue at hand. Thank him or her for that important feedback. Because not everybody who is dissatisfied complains. Those who do not complain, in most cases, don't come back again. So be very happy that the customer has identified an issue and is prepared to tell you. Then the next is provide solution. What are you going to do to address the issue? By who, when, and how? That is very, very important. Let the person be confident that the solution is near his or her table. Then also, Remember, in trying to a communicate the solution, be professional in your communication. Use words that are romantic, empathizing, and also put confidence in the customer. The next step, the third one is what tools would you deploy to get the customer known about the solution you intend? We have ample of them. Email is there, the phone, WhatsApp, uh, web form, AI technologies are all available. So you deploy which of them that you think you have. Then also get a database on your customers. Database on your customers, their names, uh, location, telephone numbers, vocation, category of uh, uh, educational uh, qualification that they have, so that you can address an issue. Then follow up on closing the loop. That is where you are clear exactly on the solution and you try and provide it to the person. Ensure that the solution is rendered to the customer and the customer is happy and you also acknowledge his or her feedback. Then, the last but not the least is customer feedback. Please, Professor Tim said, data. So keep enough of data on every customer and their issues that he brought up. So if the complaint is in Rwanda, you have to categorize them in the customer base, male, male or female, then uh, adult or youth or aged, then particular products that the problems are. Then you analyze what results you get, especially the trend, the patterns. For example, if a particular office, particular group of people, people Complaints are rising, it means there's an issue that needs to be addressed. I hope it's clear. Okay. Then the last bit is whatever results that you get from the feedback uh, system, please implement them. 
don't just get the feedback, data, analyze, and put a report under this shelf. We have to implement. If customers are saying that staff are rude, you need to deal with that. If customers say that the products are defect, you must deal with that. If customers are saying that the environment of the office is not good enough, you have to deal with that. If the fiscal evidence is deficit, you have to deal with that. If promotion of the product, the brand, the visibility are not known by a lot of customers, you deal with that. Yeah. So I think on that note, I am through with how best professionally you can identify customers and without the customers you will not get the sales if you don't get the sales the company will not grow and you will find yourself in a miserable situation after you have had your customers and the sales are going on you must request for inquiries and address them and this is what all other countries that you want to visit this is what they are doing prof is not what they are doing it's the same thing they are not doing anything different from what you've said i'll share my experience with you briefly then i'll end 2007 i had a chance to go to japan for a training program i was so excited do you know the reason why because I have studied management. And every topic that we went through, the country Japan features strongly, including others. <coughs> so I was happy to go and find out what is behind what uh, they've learned and what they are doing. In fact, I went there and stayed there for two months. I was disappointed. Who can tell me why I was disappointed? Yes. Can you, can you guess? Who can guess? Yes. According to your ex 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 expectation, what you want to come from there it is uh, different with what you get when you reach the expectation. No, oh, not necessarily that. I was disappointed because all the things that I knew we were taught in Ghana is the same thing they taught, they taught us in Japan. The same thing. They didn't teach us anything different. The same thing. So it means that the discussion we are having today, Prof, myself, and the other colleagues, wherever you go, is the same thing that what you'll be taught. So go back and what? Practice them. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. He has made us understand how important customer feedback is. You see, when you are selling something or you're trading and they tell you, ah, I don't like this about what your business is doing, it's not an insult. Some people get angry when they give them feedback. Feedback is not a bad thing. Feedback is an opportunity for you to improve on how you are delivering your service, okay? So feedback is an opportunity for you to grow. So when your customer is giving you information, take them happily. And if you are in business as well, you're selling, it's important that you give a positive attitude because attitude is everything. Attitude is 100%. You need to be polite. You know you are doing business, you're going to have interface with customers. You need to smile, okay? You need to put a smile. You are not smiling, are you not happy? You need to smile, okay? When your customer comes and you are frowning, how much? I'm not selling. <laughs> Do you think the customer will enjoy that interaction? <laughs> exactly. Do you think the customer will come back again? So you need to make sure that every moment you have with your customer is an enjoyable one, a memorable one, so that they will come back again. Because guess what? People will forget what you say to them. People will forget what you even sell to them. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Okay? If you make your customers feel good, they will come back again. There's a saying that every action that is rewarded will reoccur. And every action that isn't rewarded will extinguish. 
So for you to continue to experience your customer, make sure that every time they spend with you, they're having a fantastic moment, okay? So let's give ourselves a round of applause. So we are, as, as we wind up, we have our last speaker that will speak for just 10 minutes, please. <laughs> yeah? 10 minutes so that we can, we can beat up with our time. So he's just going to basically summarize everything we have spoken about and talk about how we can use the IT world, internet, your social media to promote your businesses, okay? So let's sit back and relax as we welcome Dr. Prince Will. Thank you. <laughs> let's give him a round of applause as he comes up. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, Paul. I really appreciate that. Um, I mean, I haven't looked at everything that's been said today, you know, from Professor Tim to Dr. Theophilus. I don't think, I mean, they've actually covered most aspects of what I have to deliver. Um, I don't think I've got any more to deliver. I think I just managed to just go home. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just, just kidding me. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, I think just, just, um, just, just prior before um, Paul just um, had informed me about the particular topic I was just about to deliver, I, I, I took a really close look at what that actually entailed. But before I start, let me just introduce myself. I'm Prince Will Akpala, and um, I'm a nuclear engineer. And people are wondering what 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 what, the, what business does a nuclear engineer have doing talking about developing sales strategies. Okay, so I've been um, working in the power energy sector for over 20 years now. It sounds like a long time. <laughs> Look a bit too young, I guess. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and as you as you as you evolve in in your career, you know you will tend to also basically take on quite a lot of hats. And that's why I'm so excited when I see a lot of you guys because I see a lot of young faces. And I actually see myself in you because I, I was I've been there, <laughs> you know. So you are you, you are the change. You are, you are the ones that you know the future is waiting for right now to basically make that impact. And you've got to make every every aspect of it count in every ramification of what you're looking into. So just without further ado, go into the central theme around the development of an effectiveness of pulling together a sales strategy. I've, I looked into it every closer and. What does that actually involve? It actually involves being able to obviously boost revenues, building relationship with other organizations and businesses as well, and also basically potentially ensure that your, your business and your areas of interest, you're able, actually able to thrive in those competitive markets as well. And that's what it's all about. But in order to do that, um, there have been some statistics from Business, business enterprises that have actually stated that to have actually a very, very strong sales strategy, you need to also basically be a, have to, you need to actually have a really good understanding of your customer base and also be able to engage with various vendors, businesses, organizations, and so forth. So, so this actually leads me into understanding, okay, so if we're trying to basically develop a strategic sales and effective sales enterprise strategy. What would that actually entail? So I think I want to just engage us, you guys to actually to get your feedback around aspects of it as well because you know it's not just about I, I reckon it's just not, not just about boosting revenue and also you know looking at various areas where we can close deals, but also basically being able to provide it that's of sustainable growth. You know, for your for your businesses and your startups in every aspect, whether it's online, if it's if it's a face to face thing, if it's you know it's if it's by having a retail, whatever it is. But in order to do that, obviously, you need to understand what the purpose of why do we do we actually need to develop an effective sales strategy. So can can so anyone give me so any pointers? You know, what, you know, I'll just start from here. What, what do you what do you think? Is there any, what, what purpose for why we want to basically develop? A, an effective sales strategy. Yes. Yeah. Um. Like if the purpose of why why do I why do I need sales? Why do I want to actually have a sales plan in my organization? Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. 
Absolutely. So it's all about basically, as you said, relied sales. What, what does that mean? It basically means you're, 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 you're enhancing that, that revenue. Enhancing revenue. So, and also basically, as you said, creating opportunities as well. Opportunities. What, 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 what other um, reasons do, 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 do we think that we want to, we need to actually have a, a, a sales development plan with a strategy? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Abs that's fantastic. It, it, that's all about integrity, that reputation, yeah? yeah? Fantastic, absolutely. So rep you've got reputation. Business reputation, I mean, I think this is, and having the input and output, and output. When we, when we say reputation here, we're talking about, I think, when we talk about integrity, you know, every, every business, you know, wants to basically ensure that they have a brand name. You know, you, you see co companies like, organizations like Apple, GE, um, Tesla, so, so many online brand, brand names there, they rely on that brand because they're well known all around the world. And what was the reason for that? They build their reputation, but at the same time, they've built that integrity as well because a lot of customers, whoever's coming out from there, <laughs> it's top notch. <laughs> Absolutely. So, the, and the same thing goes with the input and output. You want to be able to understand what goes in and what goes out of your organization. So, the, all these are really, really important. And, and uh, they, they are also. Other important point as well, you want to ensure that we can be able to understand the market to actually drive, get a, 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 a data-driven decision-making process in place as well. You want to ensure that you, we can basically, you know, upscale our, our, our business, you know, scalability and growth is also important. That is one of the also reasons why we actually need to actually develop a marketing strategy as well. And also, with that, you know, you also want to basically have a competitive advantage, you know, so having a competitive advantage is so important, and that also leads to having something we'll call, we call a USP, you know, a, a user, you know, a unique sales proposition, but I'll, I'll cover that much a bit later on as well. I'll try, I'll just try and be a bit brief on this because I'm just aware of the time as well. And in, in terms of the understanding the winning sales strategy that we need, I've sort of highlighted like five areas around this as well. Um, one, of the, one of the key ones I've, I've looked into were, uh, as, as um, I think Dr. Tiofoli mentioned earlier and I think, knowing your customers. Know, knowing your customers is so, is so crucial, it's so important. You know, you want to understand, you know, the, the demographic of, the, of, 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 your, of your customers, the, the, the age group of those customers, you know, um, the, um, the even, even basically understanding the, the, the various profiles around this customer, you want to basically be able to package what you, what you have and be able to market and sell that product to the right customers as well. And that way, that will actually yield of your, your sales as, um, growth as well. Another thing is basically looking at be, being able to prioritize, you know, um, and build relationships with customers. Once you know them, you build a relationship with them, you know, you look into how you can actually provide continuous improvement, you know. Um, Dr. Tiofre talked about getting feedback. Getting feedback actually will help you <coughs> enhance your continuous improvement, your quality services to those organizations. That is so key, it's so, so important. Another thing you're looking into that also in this current age of AI is embracing G2 technology. Every business wants to basically get online. Every business wants to basically be able to have a presence in the multiverse, you, you know. Every business wants to basically be able to actually you know, be at the top of the Google, you know, pinnacle, like Dr. Tim, <laughs> like Professor Tim. You know, it, it, it's, it's, all, it's, it's all, all about making sure that you can have that market presence, both online and both, even traditional as well. And I'll touch on various aspects of that in the, in the coming slides and talks about this as well. So, you know, in, in terms of that, I, I reckon it's also important to really understand what are called the five W's. 
you know, you want to understand who you want to market the, the products to, where you want to market to, why, you know, you must have a purpose that, that I mentioned earlier, you get it. Where else? Two other, two other W's? To whom? To whom, exactly. And, and what about? When? Thank you. You know, timing in, in, is quite, it's also very, very important when you're actually trying to market your product in, 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 in any form. You know, there, there are some products that actually sell well in summer, there are products that actually sell well in winter, it sells well all year round. <laughs> so it's all about where you want to prioritize those products as well. Um, so I'll just try and move to the, to the next bit where you want to also basically look into having that sort of um, a building a, a winning sales process. And that goes a long way in terms of building relationships, nurturing, you know, you're trying to, you know, sometimes as, a, as an engineer, I, I, found, I found myself in various organizations and various departments where, and even customers and clients, where you, you just, just, don't just go out and sell a, a nuclear power station to a country or to a vendor. You need to basically nurture the clients. You need to basically you know, sell your proposition to them, <coughs> let them understand what your technology is all about, what you're all about, what your organization is all about. And it, that takes time. And so it doesn't happen overnight. So when you hear that Rwanda is basically just about to build its first you know, demonstration reactor, it's happened, it, it's the, the plan actually has been discussed five years ago. <laughs> you know, it's, and it's nurtured to the point where, yes, the Rwanda Atomic Energy Board now plans to basically build its first demonstration reactor, which is basically supported by a German Canadian nuclear company because of the fact that this, all this aspect has been talked about, planned through, it has been engaged with international regulators like the IAEA and so forth. So this is all about the building that, you know, that, that sales and marketing opportunity, which will actually enhance, you know, other faces and aspects of the, of the economy going forward. So it, it has end-to-end -end value prospect as well. So this is, this is why it's so, so important. And I think what I'll try to do, I'll just keep some slides for the, for the purpose of time. And it, I reckon it's also important that we need to also be able to um, measure how we want to basically execute a lot of these strategies. Um, what do I mean by that? That means ensuring that we have you know, KPIs, key performance indicators to help us understand how well we're actually doing in the market, you know, always being able to ha have like ten, a, it's sort of a regular evaluation of our, of our process. You know, how are we doing well? Do we need to tr change or tweak any aspect of our, pro our process as well? And, and also basically having an action plan. You know, action plan actually helps you because there's, there's, some, there's something that, does, that they say in quality. It, once it's written, it exists. You know, if your plan is written, definitely you want to basically stick that plan. But if it's not written anywhere, you, you, you don't really have a plan, do you? <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> and so that is one of the important things that, you know, I always enc encourage every startup to also, also have. You know, you need to basically build a good documentary evidence of how you're going to basically build your business going forward. You know, you're all very young, young, you know, capable people, boys and girls, men, men and, and, and women. And I reckon that, you know, being able to understand the right person at an early age, you know, it, it will help you really, you know, ascend and, you know, really grow, you know, not just your businesses, but your career as well, and your, your own personal development plans that you all have in the, in the future. So one last thing I would do, I would also want to cover an aspect of um, what we call mastering the digital traditional platform. So you're looking at basically that synergy between you know, digital marketing and also digital marketing. So digital marketing and, and, and traditional marketing, there, there, there are two aspects that, you know, that as young professionals, and we, we, we tend to basically, everybody else basically go online. Oh, you know, everything's got digital. But we forgot for that, you know, that we still want to basically be able to, you know, to, to work with our, the same, some of the, the, tra the traditional ways that actually we, we, we still used to in actually selling and marketing our product as well, because that hasn't really changed. And, and, and an aspect of that basically has to do with us also basically be able to 
you, you, in terms of the traditional aspect, I think um, Professor Tim mentioned that earlier. Being able to tell a story, you need to basically be able to have a good passion for what you're trying to basically portray. Um, you know, you're, you're, you want to basically have a target outreach for the customers that I mentioned earlier, and you want to engage with the various, um, you know, that, that, you know the, the, the various um, people, the various customers, the, ver the various, you know, customer base that you, want to, you really want to basically sell those products to. And also in terms of, obviously, people are, these days, I want to talk about embracing, um, going, you've all, you've all gone online, you know, digital, TikTok, you know, Facebook, tw um, Twitch, there's so many of them, you know, <laughs> out there. And people basically market through all these mediums, which is fantastic. But at the same time, you still want to basically ensure that you actually understand how to utilize a lot of these digital tools, as um, Professor Tim mentioned, the use of AI, which is so important, data-driven marketing. What does that mean? You want to be able to, be able to capture as much as possible you know, the data that actually allow you to analyze you know, and, and, and focus on the market areas, and, 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 and even basically on the platforms that you actually want to, to market your products. Sometimes Facebook would, may not actually be able to give you that reach compared to TikTok. <laughs> you know, so so you could, to TikTok may not even give, be able to give you that reach compared to any other, like to YouTube, let's just say for instance. So the, the, a lot of these platforms, a lot of these YouTube platforms, you know, it helps understand what these two platforms can, can actually use that to actually help me tailor a lot of my marketing strategy going forward as well. And, you know, so it, it helps as, as, young, as young people, I, I'll consider myself, consider myself as young-ish, <laughs> you know, I, it, it, I, I tend to work with all these tools, both traditionally and digitally as well, because it, it, it's, it's, it, we, we can't basically just ignore one aspect of it. You have to try and basically work with everything to give you the optimum you know, um, output that you need going forward. And I think um, what I'll try to do, so is it just important that we need to have a good blend around that, and that will actually help us basically navigate around the multiverse of digital marketing going forward. Um, if you've got any, if you've got any question, feel free to ask. Like, is it wrong to, 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 to target your own, to have a target, mm -hmm. a target group of customers? Like, uh, let's say that I'm going to make a product, mm -hmm. and then I'm targeting people who are maybe rich. <laughs> okay. Is, is, is that right for someone who's looking for a successful business? It's, 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 it's not, you know, to, if, if you're looking for a successful business, you know, that is your USP. You know, so that, that, is, that is the right approach because you want to, because you know that you want to basically sell a premium product. You want to basically sell your product to a high-end customers. You know, in every market, there's what they call the high-end customers, and they don't call the middle-end, and even the lower-end customers. There's some products that basically will sell volumes at lower-end. Some customers, all you need to do is just sell a Rolls Royce, and you're made. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's still a very, it's still a fantastic proposition, but what you then have to do is basically understand how you want to basically market it to the high-end customers. Examples of that is like, you know, you could have a Rolls Royce, and you say, oh, okay, um, Obviously, not, ma not many people can actually afford a Rolls a Royce. So how am I going to, I going to sell this? You could say, okay, for every private jet that's been sold to a, to a higher customer, I want to ensure that the, the Rolls Royce, you know, just, just park somewhere by, by the corner there, beside that private jet, because that normally goes quite well with, you know, pe private jet owners, where Bentley, you know, so, so those, those sort of strategies are strategies that you, you tend to actually look at in terms of, Wanting to market high-end customers, high-end products, with and tailoring, tailoring to high-end customers, and also basically trying to work with other high-end products that can actually basically give that that product you've got an advantage as well. So it's it's, it's all a good position, and there's nothing wrong about wanting to basically sell your own product to to the rich guys in the, in, 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 the, in the in the sector. Absolutely. So it's a good question. I once saw something. They were saying that. Okay, it's a person, and he was saying that in China, yeah, the the tools they used to make an iPhone 14, mm -hmm. it's worth only ten dollars. Yes. And to tell you the amount, how much that costs here in Rwanda, mm -hmm. it's a lot. It's a lot of money. So yeah, okay. don't you think that is kind of like being? <laughs> <laughs> that is green. Yeah. Well, w w when you look at it in terms of volumes, you know, if if a a particular chip, microchip 
only cost ten dollars to basically to to build one iPhone. You know, but when you, when you when you look at it in the context of volumes, you know, you'd be, that 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 ten dollar is going into about another hundred million phones that's going to be used not just in Rwanda, it'll be used in Tanzania, it'll be used in Uganda. Then that is where the volumes come from. That is where you're getting a lot of your return. You're getting a lot of your revenue as well. You know, so you know if you look at if you look at it in terms of the, the the cost of that that little cost there provides quite an enormous you know um, revenue output in terms of the volume. So there's there's totally nothing wrong there because that is that is that is what that cell proposition is all about. That your 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 technology or your component provides um, the functionality of your iPhone and it, it also basically helps drive the volume of production as well alongside that. So I hope that answers the question. <laughs> um, any, any further questions? You know, so I'm just a of time. So thank you ever so much. You know, it's been great to you know, see you all, all your faces as done. Um, like I said, if you have any questions about career development, personal development, you know, I'll, I'll drop my contact. Feel free to ask because, like I said, you know, I, I believe that, you know, you need the encouragement. I, I'm a coach, I'm a mentor to um, what, more than 25 um, graduate engineers in the UK and also from other parts of Africa. And I always want to basically, you know, keep encouraging, mentoring, putting you through various development programs with the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, where I'm also a fellow and also other, other um, um, organizations as well. Okay? Um, today, we have learned a lot. We have learned from Professor Tim, Dr. Theophilus, and also Dr. Princewill. Professor Tim has taught us how to manage this AI of a thing that people are running away from by asking better questions. Okay? Because when you ask better questions, you get better answers. And you're able to make better decisions and you're able to get better results. So whatever you do, if you forget everything you've spoken, heard about today, don't forget that one, ABQ. Ask better questions. And also, while he was speaking, he spoke about building a reputation, a reputation for your business. What is your business known for? When you want to drink soft drink, what comes to your mind? Coca-Cola, right? When you want to, when you want pepper, what comes to your mind? Uh, Akabanga, right? <laughs> so this has happened over time because they've built what they call goodwill, right? Goodwill is not an is not a tangible asset you can feel. It comes with reputation. It's what you are known for, okay? And it is an asset. It is what they call in finance an intangible asset. So whatever you do, make sure you build goodwill for your business. And also, you guys are young people. Take advantage of both the traditional market and the modern market, which is the online platform. You have YouTube, you have Instagram, you have TikTok. TikTok is not just for dancing alone. Hmm? I know we like Afro, we like Whiskey, we like Davido, we like all these guys. But let's use it to you know, improve ourselves, improve our businesses, and amplify what we do. And have a wider reach. If the traditional marketplace will give you 100 customers, the online marketplace will give you the world. So you have the world at your palm, you have the world at your reach. So having said that, we would love to continue to collaborate with you. Most of you have registered. I have your emails, a lot of these materials. I will send it to you so that you can also you know, go through them and read them later. And um, some of you that have good ideas, you always you have our contacts. You reach out. We would love to collaborate with you. Invest in your good ideas, in your bold ideas, and see how together we can grow. Because you are the future of Africa. You are the now and the future of Africa. You are not too young to, to be a, a tech entrepreneur. Absolutely. How old was Mike Zuckerberg when he built Facebook? Eh? How old are you? So it's not too late for you. That is why I set up this stuff, to encourage, to wake up the fire in you so that you can do the needful. Do what they say is impossible, okay? The next Bill Gates can come from Rwanda, right? There's no reason why you shouldn't. So that is what we are looking for. So grow your ideas into bigger businesses. You are the now and the future. 
and together we would love to collaborate and bridge those gaps. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to issue there's a certificate we prepared for you to show that you attended this program. Because trust me, you are not the same way you came in. There's been knowledge impartation, there's been growth, and, and a lot more. So on that note, sit back, relax, as we will we'll share the certificate. And after that, we'll take a little group photograph, and we have some light refreshments for you guys. I know you, know, you might be a little bit hungry at this point. So we'll, just, we'll do that. All right, then. Um, also, um, can you hear me call the ladies to bring the certificate, please? Yes. Yeah. Some of looking how uh, this, uh, not, some of them do not know each other, so they just met for the first time. Yes. And uh, people have different um, businesses that they do. Businesses, and uh, they are different uh, areas. Uh -huh. Others are younger, coming from school. Okay. And, uh, Yes, they want to network, yeah? So there were, some of them actually asked me, some of them, uh -huh. if they could be, if you advise them maybe to, uh, to have, uh, you know, this connection. Okay. Will not actually, um, you know, go like this. So they would like to see if they can uh, stay, you know, connected. Yes, of course. So, so um, one, of one of the reasons why we're here is to meet each other, and know each other. So while we're having our refreshments, you, you discuss, you get to know yourselves, know what you do, how you can help each other, how you can add value to each other, okay? So it's part of the reasons why we're here, so it's fine. It's, it's very okay. So um, before I issue this certificate, I want to really thank this gentleman on my side, on my right hand, Dr. Professor Tim, Mr. Alex, Dr. Princeville, Dr. Tio, and even my good friend, Mugabe. Without them, this program wouldn't have been possible. I want to thank them very much. They are very busy people. Some of them are leaving for the UK tonight, but because of us, they decided to stay back. So please, let's give them a round of applause and appreciate them. So on that note, I'm going to call on the certificates in no particular order. Uh, Mr. Alex and Dr. Tim, do you want to come and assist with the yes, certificates? So, the first person on this list, if your name comes first, doesn't mean you are the first in the class, okay? <laughs> it's just, you know, randomly. So, here. <laughs> yes, we have um, Gakuba Eileen Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea, the lady in red. Thank you. As she comes up. Let us get ready. Let um, Umu, Umurungi. Wait, let me be big camera. Okay. Yes. Let's be by the. Off down the side. Off down. Oh, you know what? We can just move this. Yeah, let me just. Yeah, yeah, let's just. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Okay. Yes. So is it? So Omurunga Aguni, Linda, get ready. Let's give her a round of applause. Karabo Niyi Bizi. Oh, you are very, very active in the call. Let's give her a round of applause, please. Mukatawali Claudine. You want to get ready? Mukant, Mukantwali Claudine. You hear here? Okay. Okay, let me call. Mutesi Winnie. Hope I'm pronouncing your names properly, yeah? yeah. If I'm not, pardon me. <laughs> Let's give Winnie a round of applause, please. Congratulations. 
Kavonga Keza Sheila. Sheila is, Sheila, okay, Sheila is here. Let's give her a round of applause. Ange Uwantenge. Ange Uwantenge, which is not here. Well, am I not pronouncing this well? Aima Marie Vomilia. Aima Marie. Okay. Muka Gatari Julien. Let's give her a round of applause. So get the Karin Karenzi Nima. Karenzi Nima, get ready. Okay. Well, let me let me let me take the rest of the pictures. Okay. Come on, round the Okay, let me let me let me. Um, in the Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. Thanks for attending. Thank you. Okay. We have Mutundo Emmanuel. Is he here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very, very nice. Let's give Emmanuel a round of applause, please. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. We have um, about the singer Lambert. Lambert. He was very active too. He asked very good questions. <laughs> Lambert, come right wow. here. Congratulations. Congratulations. Steve Jobs. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Well done. Yeah, we have um, Unkuranga, Caleb. Is he here? Caleb. Is Caleb here? Yeah. We have um, one mana, Jane Malia. Oh, Jane. Jane. Yeah. Can you get out? Well done. No, let's, let's clap for him. Yeah. Right. Congratulations. Um, Edwards Suves Simia. Sorry. Sorry. This Edward. Edward, yeah. Edward. These two, I don't know where Edward. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well done. We have one Gilbert. 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 We will not give Gilbert. Well done, Gilbert. What else? Come to the middle. Well done, bro. We have uh, Maharu Vanik. Is she here? Maharu. We have um, Yasirabu Mugabe. Is he here? The last, for the first, Wagarasa God. Good. Well done. Okay, let's take a group photo quickly. So one, two, yeah, and three, four. So just write and we'll take we'll take pictures now. Okay, don't worry. Sorry, bro. What are we doing? We just want to take a group group photograph. Yeah.
Where do the group photograph? You can do it here. Are you sure? Let's do it here. Let's do it here. 